And welcome to Los Angeles everyone with Dave Campbell. This is Dwayne Stats. We are in the bottom of the eighth and a one nothing ball game. Philly scored a run on the top of the eighth and the Dodgers are threatening. They have pinch runner Roger Cedeno aboard at second base with one out and Chad Fonville at the plate. A ball no strikes the count. Ricky Botalico in his first inning in relief of rookie Mike Grace who pitched very well for seven innings tonight for the Philadelphia Phillies. A ball and a strike to count. There's Botalico. Strikeout type pitcher leads the Phillies relievers with 71 this year. Chris Gwynn the pinch hitter opened this inning with a single. He was just bunted to second by Butler. Cedeno pinch running for Gwynn is representing the tying run. The 1 1. And a pop fly toward the line. Eisenreich in left had him positioned perfectly and makes the catch for the second out. So with two gone, right field in a one nothing ball game, Raul Mondesi Raul is due up. Mondesi. The Phillies grabbed the lead in the top of the eighth when Kevin Elster lifted a sacrifice fly to left to score Eisenreich, who had opened the eighth against Ishmael Valdez with a base hit. Eisenreich. Across the plate with the only run of the game so far. Tommy Lasorda has got his big three coming up. Mondesi, 37 runs batted in in his last 39 games. He and Caros in Piazza. All for three with three fly balls tonight, including one to deep center back in the fourth inning. And he takes the first pitch in for a strike. A little slider. From Botalico. Well, both pitchers tonight, Mike Grace getting a second major league start, and Ishmael Valdez had one hitters going through the sixth inning and a lot of zeros on the board other than that. Rondesi with 79 runs banded in for the year. And it's wide, down and away. One ball, one strike. Here's Valdez. He was lifted for the pinch hitter to open the bottom of the eighth. The 22 year old right hander pitched eight very strong innings for the Dodgers tonight. He comes in with a record of 11 and 9. His opponent, Grace, as Dave pointed out, making his second major league start, he came in 0 and 1. And a drive down the left side that's going to twist foul and wind up out of play. Well, Mondesi got a high slider, just pulled the trigger a little early. He had full extension. That's a pitch he would love to have back. Looks like he also broke a bat. He just pulled the trigger ever so slightly early. Now the Dodgers started the day with 64 wins and 58 losses. They started a full game ahead of Colorado. The Rockies have won their game. So at the moment, that lead in the National League West is down to a half game. And should the Dodgers lose tonight, the Rockies going to the fourth decimal point. They've played two less games. They have one less win and one less loss. The Rockies, by four one thousandths of a point, would technically be in first place. And the Phillies, despite a terrible month of July that dropped them out of contention in the National League's Eastern Division, still find themselves within reach of the wild card race. So they're battling for that. One and two, the count. To Mondesi. And another foul ball, this one straight back. One of the things you should do with Mondesi when you get ahead of him, one, two, throw a slider that starts in the strike zone and breaks out. He is a wild swinger. And when ahead in the count, I wouldn't throw him a strike. Botalico. And Mondesi, the matchup. Cedeno at second base. Good speed there. One, two. He got him. He struck him out. Mondesi chased, and that retires the side. We are through eight from Dodger Stadium. Phillies one, and the Dodgers nothing. What do you get if you take today's coolest stars? A dash of attitude. A dollop of surprise guests. 
the best music videos of the year? We have no idea. Check out the 1995 MTV Video Music Awards. Dig in. In your arms forever. Sure, dumpling thing. Ah! As long as forever starts after Mike Tirico, Joe Theismann, and Sterling Sharp do ESPN's NFL Prime Monday. You're so romantic, Charlie. Dwayne Stats, Dave Campbell from Dodger Stadium. A 1-0 ball game heading into the ninth. The Phillies needed this one to stay alive and at least stay within position in the wild card race. Yeah, and they got a terrific performance from Mike Grace tonight, a youngster just coming out of Triple A. This is his second major league start. He challenged Dodger hitters. They hit a few deep fly balls, but uh, he kept them in. Phillies get a run, so we're going to go to the ninth, a one run ball game. And the Phillies will have the top of their order coming up here. Number 12. A one nothing contest. Mickey Morandini. A left hander, Mark Guthrie. Will take over on the mound for the Los Angeles Dodgers. 17th appearance in Dodger Blue since coming over from the Minnesota Twins. He's lost the only decision to involve him this year for the Dodgers. And Mickey Morandini leads off the night. On strike the count. Kind of fun sitting here, divided attention, <laughs> watching oh, the yeah. uh, Oriole game and the ceremonies and watching this game. Certainly our congratulations to Cal. What a tremendous evening. Breaking ball for strike two. Well, a wonderful night for Cal Ripken Jr. and his family and for all of baseball for that matter. Ripken in so many ways embodies the every man element of the game. And a wonderful night overall. A ball two strikes to count to Morandini. Will be followed by the shortstop Kevin Stocker and then Greg Jeffries, the first baseman. Run outside, the only run batted in tonight, provided by Kevin Elster, who was a late addition to the Philadelphia Phillies starting lineup. Charlie Hayes has a bad knee. He was originally scheduled to play third, but it was a scratch, and Elster in there in his place. Out of play, holding the count at 2-2. Well, the way when you stop and think about the Phillies who are on the shelf, four of their starting pitchers gone for the year. Darren Dalton, their leader, catcher, gone for the year, knee surgery. Lenny Dykstra gone for the year, knee surgery. Dave Hotlands, who they had counted on, couldn't produce, has had a bad hand. Now Charlie Hayes out of the lineup tonight. They're going with a lot of guys, basically triple uh, A type players, and still leading here in the ninth. Warren Dini lifts this one high and deep to right. Mondesi, just in front of the track, will make the catch for the out. Well, let's take a look at the wild card standing in the National League as we come into tonight's game. Houston losing tonight, Colorado winning, and the Rockies beating the Cubs, so Chicago two back. Philadelphia could move the two back with a win tonight, and the Padres with an extra inning victory today. They are three back. One out, base is empty for Stocker. Stocker, a strikeout victim tonight in three trips facing Valdez. Valdez struck out six while he was in there. Dodgers have Carlos Piazza and DeShields scheduled in the bottom of the ninth. Carlos has had a lot of late inning heroics this year for Los Angeles. Pitches pitch is on the outside edge for a strike. Phillies wrapping up a nine game road trip and it has been a tough one for them. They're only two and six on this trip. Dodgers wrapping up a nine game homestand. Dodgers go off to Pittsburgh, St. Louis and Chicago. They have nine games on the road before returning home to play Western Division foes the final two weeks of the season. A ball two strikes. Well, for a guy like Mark Guthrie, you'd have to think John Hudek could take some solace in the fact that Guthrie had the same surgery he did a couple of years ago. Had a vein blocked off, had to have surgery to remove part of a rib so that the blood could flow. So John Hudek of the Astros trying to recover from that same surgery. Down 
down and in. Stocker checked in time on the pitch, and the count goes to two and two. Guthrie's addition gave some balance to the Los Angeles bullpen. As they've expanded the roster. And with Guthrie out there, have four left handers in the bullpen now. This is Castro from third, a wide throw, but Carroll's comes off the bag to get the tag. Juan Castro took over at third in the eighth inning when Hansen was lifted. He pulled Karras off the bag, but Karras got the tag. Stocker didn't think so. Castro just up from Albuquerque. Dodgers have added several players from the AAA club. You see Castro making an all-out extended play. Rights the ship, but pulls off. Let's see if the tag is evident in this shot. Nope, he missed him. And first base umpire Larry Poncino did not get it right. Base is empty with two outs in the first pitch to Jeffries is on the outside edge. Jeffries has one of the three Philly hits. It came in the first inning. One thing about being an umpire, especially at first base, you've got to pick an angle you think is going to give you the best look. There are some blind spots, and that's one that Poncino was in right there. Nothing into the count. You see, Carlos has the glove out, has not tagged, but. You know, again, on that play, you cannot be everywhere at once if you're the first base umpire. You take the angle you think is going to give you the best opportunity to get the call right. And on that one, he got blocked off by Carlos's glove. He's going to carry out of play. Holding the count right there. No balls, two strikes. It's just where he faces Jeffries. Greg had the only hit off Valdez until the eighth inning. In fact, he was the only Philly base runner until the eighth. And then Eisenreich and Van Slyke opened with singles. Mike Lieberthal sacrificed him to third and second. Then Elster hit the go ahead sacrifice fly. And the tap, that's going to go foul. And the count is still nothing and two on Jeffries. Bottom of the ninth due for the Dodgers. A collective 0 for 8 with a walk. In the middle of the order, Carroll's Piazza and the Shields. And what at the moment is a 1-0 ball game with the Phillies out in front. There they are. Guthrie trying to hold the Phillies right where they are. Nothing ball game of the Phillies leading the Dodgers. Dodgers to hit in the bottom of the ninth inning. And they will face the third Philly pitcher, Heath Cliff Slocum, who is third in the National League and saves with 29, comes on to face the middle of the Dodger order. Notice you say that name very slowly, just like I do. <laughs> it is a tough name to say without lisping too much. Four great wins fastball. and six losses. Yeah, great fastball. Slider throws a split. And he was one of the main reasons the Phillies got off to such a tremendous start this year. Dodgers' best chance to score came in the third. Runners at first and second. Chad Fonville hits it. Dave Hansen, though, comes around third. And they get him trapped in a rundown. And Morandini, who made the play up the middle, he ends up making the tag at third base. So Mickey Morandini saved the run as we'll watch Hansen coming around third. The stop sign may be up just a little bit late, or at least Hansen didn't pick it up. And Morandini, the presence of mind to get it in Elster, and then they got him in the rundown. Well, they're starting to call Eric Carroll's Mr. Clutch around Dodger Stadium. He leads off the bottom of the ninth. Carroll's with 27 home runs, 
Seventh in the league in that department and fifth in the league and runs batted in with 87. Slocum's first pitch is too low, ball one. And a hot shot to short. Stocker up with this one on one hop and he makes the play. Carroll hit the ball hard and Stocker made a nice play. The Phillies come in rated number three in the National League in defense and they have played flawlessly tonight. Stocker's made a couple of nice plays. Van Slyke a couple of nice running catches. Whitten won. So the Philly defense has made all the plays they've needed to make tonight. Well, there is Mike Piazza. Piazza start of the night. Atop the league with an average of 363, 0 for 2 with a walk. Average standing at 361. And a foul ball, strike one. Dave, one of the reasons Slocum has been so successful this year, he's been able to keep the ball in the ballpark. He's given up just a couple home runs in 58 innings. He has that fearless look that closers need to have. He just goes after hitters, says, Here's my best stuff, see if you can hit it. Throws it in a downward plane. And a fly ball back into right field. Witten on the track, and he makes the catch for the second out. Piazza hit the ball all the way to the track to the opposite field, but Witten got over there. Hey, the Dodgers have really hit two on the screws here in the ninth inning, but to no avail, a second good catch by Witten tonight as Piazza goes the other way. Witten in full glide, good concentration, and hauls it in just as he's in front of the barrier. So two up, two down against Slocum. But the hard way. Here's Delino De Shields. And it's low. Ball one. De Shields' bat has been revived recently. And he is the last hope for the Dodgers tonight. Ahead on the count, two balls, no strikes. Slocum picks up a strike on the corner and it's two and one. Last year, Delano Shields may have had the biggest hit the Dodgers had all year. He had a three run homer off John Hudak when the Dodgers were really struggling. But he's going to have to pull the trigger right here because it's two and two. Nobody on with two outs. Bottom out of the night. And the two two. Strike three call on the corner and this game is over. Slocum picks up the game ending strikeout one two three go the Dodgers and the Phillies have won this one one nothing a one nothing contest as the Dodgers stand at 64 and 59 now Colorado moving into first place by percentage points. Well if you take it out to the fourth decimal it's five two oh six for the Rockies five two oh four three for the Dodgers so the Rockies have technically moved into first place they have played two less games for the Dodgers terrific pitchers do all the night ball game that took about two hours and seven minutes and Ishmael Valdez the tough luck loser Mike Grace gets his first major league win and pitched a beauty so Mike Grace now one and one and Valdez drops to eleven and ten. For Dave Campbell and the rest of our ESPN crew, I'm Dwayne Stats. Nice to have you with us tonight. The final, the Phillies won, Dodgers nothing. Now let's go to John Saunders. All right, guys, thanks a lot. One nothing, the Phillies get the win in a very short game. He missed most of it because of Cal Ripken's heroics in Baltimore tonight. When we come back, we'll have a look back at that. We'll also have the scores and highlights, update you on all the games being played, plus a live report from Baltimore. Stick around. Still plenty more to come here on ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball as we take you up to Sportsnet. It's taken Cal Ripken Jr. 13 grueling years to break Lou Gehrig's record. Now we are honoring this historic baseball event with this officially endorsed Cal Ripken Jr. 23 karat gold stamp wallet. Beautifully detailed but limited to only 2,131 of 15 sets worldwide. 
Each set comes safely protected in this handsome special collector's presentation wallet. The Cal Ripken Jr. official postage stamp, issued by the islands of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, comes with its own numbered certificate of authenticity and is extremely limited, so act quickly. You get the Cal Ripken Jr. gold stamp, the display wallet, and this paper stamp set on a cache card canceled by the government on the very day Cal broke the record. You get all this for only $39.95. Here's how you can order. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. Or send check or money order for $39.95 plus $3.95 shipping to SSCA PO Box 1809, Department A, Hicksville, New York. Welcome back once again to ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball. It was Wednesday Night Baseball, but the night belonged to Cal Ripken Jr. in Baltimore earlier tonight as he stands alone now with the longest streak in the history of Major League Baseball, 2,131 games. Rachel and Ryan, his kids throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Wife Kelly looking on as Cal Ripken would later go on to hit a home run and would also, of course, change the number on the wall at Camden Yard to 2,131. Two gentlemen who were there to witness history. Join us now, Carl Ravitch and Peter Gammons from Baltimore. Gentlemen, must have been tremendous. Well, John, absolutely, and I know a lot of people, millions watched it on television, and I didn't know if it could be done justice. You did watch it on TV. You said it did, but I'll tell you, to be here was absolutely awe-inspiring, and Peter Gammons, who has been around so many miraculous events in baseball, where does this rank? Well, it's very different from Rose passing Cobb or Aaron passing Ruth. I was there for both of those. Those are great moments, very different media moments, but great moments. It wasn't electrifying like Gibson's home run off Eckersley or Fist's home run in 75, but I have never been at a sporting event which was had a greater warmth to it, a greater affirmation of everything that's positive in all of us. And I don't think I've ever been in a moment, ever experienced anything that was better for the game of baseball. It was funny. Cal Ripken came up. Every time he came up, uh, the pitch would come in and flash bulbs would go off. And I said to someone next to me, I said, you know, he may go 0 for 4 tonight because he'll be blinded by the light. Well, he wasn't because the next pitch he hit for a home run. You know what's great about all this, Carl? I mean, there's some players draw back, and it's very difficult being in the public spotlight. Two of the best I ever saw were Rose and George Brett. When they were in the spotlight, they said, hey, I got here. I'm going to enjoy it. Cal Ripken's a very private man, but he's worked so hard for this. He just made up his mind, I'm going to enjoy this for all it's worth. And it really came through, and I think it rubbed off on everybody on both teams here. It rubbed over all over baseball. Hey, I mean, you can be a celebrity and still have a good time. And Cal seems as happy as I've ever seen him, except when the team won. As, as private as a guy he is, he's so public and he shares everything with the people. What I was amazed at is as he drove around in the Corvette after this game, he was trying to reach out to the fans and give them high fives. Well, I think and we all know there's not an athlete in this country who more represents his city for such a myriad of reasons. But this feeling that, hey, I owe it to you, I am one of you, is something that everyone around in Baltimore really feels. I mean, you would not see people love an athlete anywhere else the way Baltimoreans love Cal Ripken and it's just unique from the team from the fans a pool table a rock which weighs 2131 pounds an automobile can you do enough for a guy who has done enough uh, done so much for a community do you think no I don't think he needed any gifts I think it went way beyond that I think the look in his teammates eyes I think that the way Mike Mussina and Brady Anderson went out there the look in Ken Singleton's eyes when he went out there that respect is enough for anyone. And I, even on the other side, when Cal made the base running mistake in the eighth inning, Jim Evans came in and caught the ball. He just couldn't throw the ball to first base and show him up. There was just too much respect there. And I think the respect is what Cal wants most. Well, I think Edmonds was like me. I think he thought this was a movie, that this was not really happening. 2,131 consecutive games, three consecutive games with a home run. Obviously, he is not slowing down. For Peter Gammons, I'm Carl Ravitch. Let's go back to John. All right, Carl and Peter, thank you very much, and you were very fortunate to be there to witness that history. We're going to have a little bit of a look at more of it, including the fifth inning when the numbers officially changed and the streak did become official in the record books. We'll also have a look at some scores and highlights to bring the day into focus. So stick around. An unbelievable night, including Cal Ripken Jr. homering for the third consecutive day, his 15th home run of the season. But it could not have come at a more unbelievable time on the day he breaks Lou Gehrig's streak. Brother Billy was there. 
part of that double play combination for a number of years with the Orioles and very fortunate to be the brother of Cal Ripken Jr. and the son of Cal Ripken Sr. Back with more in a moment. Wednesday night baseball continues on ESPN. There were other games today and tonight. 4-3 Cubs in the third. Jason Bates with the bases loaded. Knocks this one out to left field and it clears the bases. Colorado goes up 6-4 and goes on to a 10-4 victory. That was the final on that one. And as you know, now just percentage points ahead of the Los Angeles Dodgers in first place in the West as they seesaw back and forth. Atlanta over top of St. Louis. 6-1 was the final. Ryan Klesko driving in two runs. He's now hitting 314 on the season. New York loses to San Diego. 6-5 was the final there. Bip Roberts driving in the game-winning run in the ninth inning with a single. Cincinnati over Houston 7-3. Lewis 3-4 three with three runs batted in, including a home run, just his third of the year. Florida over the Pirates, 2-1 to one was the final, and that one is Greg Colburn. A 17-game hitting streak has continued as he drives in a run as well. Montreal, 8-2 is the final. They knock off San Francisco. The Expos getting four runs in the fifth inning. A look at the National League wildcard race up to date. The Rockies with a one-game lead over the Astros, although you could put the Dodgers or the Rockies in there. They're actually tied right now. The Rockies slightly percentage points ahead of the Dodgers. The Astros a game back, the Cubs and the Phillies two back in the Padres, now three back. We'll continue with more in just a moment here on Wednesday Night Baseball. When we come back, we'll take a look at the American League, including their wild card race. Stick around, more to come. Coming up on the Press Box, living proof that hard work pays off. Cal Ripken Jr. makes his mark in baseball history surpassing the Iron Horse's seemingly insurmountable record and taking the field for the 2,131st consecutive time. Monica Sellis is working on a streak of her own and was sweating over her quarterfinal match in the U.S. Open. How about Big Bad Boris? Can he keep Patrick McEnroe from crashing his quarterfinal party? In football, Neon Dion may be making his move. The Cowboys owner Jerry Jones has things his way. On November 12th, primetime may be Steve Young's primary receiver. And figure skater Brian Boitano is taking his own ice show on the road. He'll tell us about it in the Skybox. So quit bouncing around. Keep it locked right here on the Press Box next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Press Box. I'm Leslie Goodell alongside Randy Sparagi. The celebration continues in Baltimore. Yesterday, Cal Ripken did what no one thought possible when he tied Lou Gehrig's consecutive game record. And tonight, Cal will break that record. And believe it or not, there are some uh, who think Cal should sit this one out in honor of Lou Gehrig. But I don't think that's going to happen. Our Bill McDonald is taking in all the festivities, and he joins us now from Baltimore. All right, guys, thanks a lot. What a great night for baseball here in Baltimore. Camden Yards, and tonight is the night that Cal Rickman Jr. finally passes Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse, and he becomes the Iron Man in Major League Baseball. Right over my shoulder, those are the numbers right there. 2130, it's going to, well, a little later on tonight, they're going to change it to 2131. He will become the all-time leader in consecutive games played. But speaking of drama, it's going to be hard to top last night. What a night when Cal Ripken Jr. finally tied Lou Gehrig. Okay, Earl, it's your pick. Thank you. It's been difficult to eat really well. It's been difficult to sleep. It just feels like uh, it's all coming to a head. It was exhausting today. It was great. Um, you know, there's nothing better than that. But uh, mentally, you know, it can be a little exhausting. It seems like it's been building, you know, for years, but more specifically, it's been building since spring training. It gathered a lot of momentum here in the last two weeks, and uh, I think it's time to uh, to celebrate it, to enjoy it. Um, but no, I hope I hope it doesn't linger on. I hope it doesn't linger on. You know, to me, it, you, know, you just went out there and you, and you kept playing. We're halfway through the event now. Uh, you know, there's some sense of relief, but uh, there's still some sense of terror for tomorrow night. takes on a uh, all-star game atmosphere, it takes on a World Series atmosphere, probably because of all you guys are here. It, uh, it maybe brought out the best in our team, and uh, they went out and really swung the bat really well. 
something that they took a lot of pressure off and, and eased the burden by hitting home runs. That was a really exciting inning. When you hit, uh, I guess it was four home runs in one inning, and three were back to back to back. You don't see that very often. I, I don't think in my wildest dreams that anyone could will a, a salute like that to me. So, you know, if, if you could, you know, you probably try to do it every day. I mean, it was a great, fun game to be a part of. So I don't know. Uh, I'm not in the business of script writing, but uh, if I were, you know, this would have been a pretty good one. This is the longtime voice, of course, of the Baltimore Orioles, John Miller. Quite a party last night that you threw. Yeah, I wish I'd thought of it. It was uh, <laughs> it was quite a night. If they left it up to me, I just would have let everybody cheer when they, they wanted to cheer and then said thanks for coming and, and gone home. But uh, the Orioles put on some uh, festivities after the ball game, and Cal seemed to enjoy it. The crowd was was really into it, and uh, they had uh, people from the movies, people from sports, from the NBA, and uh, from the Olympics, and, and you name it. And uh, so it was a great night, and people have been talking about it all day today, and I think uh, uh, there's even more of an era of expectation here tonight. Uh, the people seem to, to really be up for it, so it uh, should be a lot of fun. I think the local paper here, the Baltimore Sun, put it best. If there's anybody that's a historian on the streak, it's you, because you've seen uh, just about every single game that, that Cal has played during the streak. It's really a workman like, a work, a, a regular man's record, too, and I, I think that epitomizes this town also, doesn't well, it? Well, as Cal has said, he said, hey, this means I showed up every day, that's mm -hmm. all. Uh, Cal really didn't want to make a big fuss out of out of these games because uh, as he said many times he says hey, well, I mean what's it's not like I'm gonna hit a home run and that's the record right I mean I'm gonna show up and if I'm physically able to play I'll go out and I'll play and that's it so uh, but that's not really the way the crowd has looked at it and I think Hank Aaron put it best uh, just the other day and he was here last night for the ceremonies uh, he said the more he thought about it the more he felt that this was uh, really impressive that uh, right. just an incredible thing and he, he also said that he thought maybe it had to be a player to have played the game on a daily basis to really have a full understanding of just what it really means. I think uh, the ball players in the Major League Baseball today, former players, are, are universally impressed with this. They know how difficult it is, not just physically. And your body takes a beating, it takes a pounding every day, day after day, but also mentally. And and that that's where I think Cal uh, has the advantage over almost anybody, uh, you know, you and me included. Cal has always had that in incredible ability, almost a superhuman ability, to put everything aside and focus on the moment, right. on the job at hand. And and I think that's not just because he has that ability, but because he's so well prepared. You know, he's prepared himself all his life for this. And and then he goes out and, and, and plays a, a smooth ball game, gets three hits, hits a home run, as if there's no big deal going on. You're the best. Give me a 10-second preview on what we expect tonight after the game. Very quickly. Give just a little bit of a sneak. Well, I think we, you know, uh, Joe DiMaggio is going to be here, oh, yeah. and uh, uh, Brooks Robinson, uh, Cal's mom and dad, uh, the, the players from the uh, the club who were here in 82 when he, when he started the streak, things like that. Uh, the president, of course, is going to be here. I don't know if he'll be here after the game or not, but uh, so it should be a real, uh, it'll be a different kind of a ceremony than, than, than last night, and I think there'll be a, uh, be a, a lot of handkerchiefs in use uh, right. here tonight. Cal himself of course, uh, will speak and he will make his comments to the fans. So I think that's what everybody's waiting for. Him. Appreciate it. Have fun. All right. John Miller, voice of the Orioles. We're going to go back to the press box. All right. Thanks very much, Billy Mack. Got to be a thrill to be in Baltimore. But if you can't be there, the press box will take you there. We will. And meanwhile, you'd never know it, but there are other baseball games going on today. Okay, in fact, after all the pomp and circumstances over at Camden Yards, the focus in baseball will be on both wild card races and the race in the NL West. Colorado Rockies are sitting right in the heart of that division showdown. One game back from the Dodgers, and today they took on the Cubs in Chicago, and at Wrigley Field, this is what happened. The Rockies trailed 4-3 to three in the third, but they come back to win this one 10-4. And the Mets and the Padres. Padres trailed earlier in this one, and right now in the top of the ninth, they have tied it all up at five apiece. 
Cards at the Braves. Tom Glavin gets his 14th win of the season. We will have more on the Braves in their prime performances. The Braves beat the Cardinals 6-1. to one. And the Tigers and the Twins. Cecil Fielder with home run number 29 on the year, but that was the only point they put on the board for the Tigers as the Twins beat them 9-1. to one. Time for us to take our first break of the evening. We've got Brian Boitano paying us a visit in the skybox a little later. When we come back, we've got tennis from the U.S. Open. That we do, and Monica Sellers had a tough day on the court. We'll show you the highlights and let you know if she's on her way to the semifinals. We'll also have the latest on prime time. Deion Sanders getting set to sign a new NFL contract, but will he sign with Jerry Jones and the Cowboys? Only D you got to see the O's go against California. This series has been 13 years in the making, 2,131 games in the making. Simply stated, this series belongs to Cal. Game 21-31, the record they said would never fall, fall. You gotta see Cal Ripken Jr.'s record-breaking game, Wednesday at 7.30 on HTS. Will Deion Sanders re-sign with the 49ers, or will he make his way to Dallas? Word is, primetime will make his decision by the end of this week, and all things considered, it sure looks like he's big D-bound. The Cowboys are in desperate need of help in the secondary now that Kevin Smith is out with an injury. Add the fact that Dion wants to play some wide receiver and the Cowboys are willing to play him on offense. And let's not forget the recent deal between the Cowboys and Nike. And all signs point towards Dion becoming a Cowboy. And as the Cowboys get all their ducks in line to try to win another Super Bowl in their books, there's another Texas team looking for greatness of equal proportion and NCAA title. We'll profile Texas Aggies head coach R.C. Slocum when we return. And that takes us right to trivia. Question is, which Southwest Conference team was the last to win the national championship? We'll give you the answer when we come back. <laughs> 